So Virgil, Virgil wasn't happy. Uh, Vanessa Friedman was obviously, you know, poking the bear and causing controversy while she's in Paris, smooching and scooching, uh, which is cool for her, I guess. Uh, but yeah, let's 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 kind of go through it and see what we can do. So, um, uh, number one, Virgil never really re- responds right ever to anything. He's always really kind of like uh, stoic and very much stood on it. And I've always thought. It was quite admirable that he does that because I think there's a lot of stuff that gets said about Virgil, even probably privately in the scene and in industry. That's a little bit unfair. Some of the criticism that comes that comes his way, I think a lot of it is warranted. I think the way he came into the scene, the way that you know the the, the rugby flannels, I'll never forgive. In my humble opinion, I think it was a, an, an obvious ploy to you know latch upon and take advantage of the whole Ian Connor Tumblr era of all the kind of quote unquote kids plopping up like kid like Glenn Brown and young Lucas Abat and he obviously saw an option an, an, uh, an opportunity for him to get himself and uh, in there and become the de facto kind of big brother and he used it and exploited it to his gain really you know buying up all the uh, stock of the old rugby tops and print screening them and selling for five hundred dollars. Look I've got no problem with buying up the stock and print screening it because to be honest I'm a big fan of fashion. So I'm a big fan of streetwear. I'm a big fan of Nigo. I'm a big fan of the old Nowhere store. You know, uh, uh, those OGC guys like J- John Takashi, Hiroshi Fujiwara. If you research them and you find out about their story, you'll find out that they used to do the same thing too, right? They'd buy like beefy tees and print their logo on it. Sorry, print their designs on it. Leave the, the hang tags in it and just stitch their logo, their woven tags on top of them. So some old baby neck t- tops or t-shirts that you get, you might sometimes get like a dual tag. You get like an AA blank tag and also the tag on baby ape kind of like a nod kind of like a, w- a weird ironic nod to kind of like the fake uncollaboration so i'm not mad at that right reappropriating champion hoodies and screen your thing on it cool but then sell it in line with where it's come from right you're making you're obviously taking an item that's already been ready made and you're elevating a little bit but let's not say you're elevating a rugby top that high it's not as if you like you know replace the buttons with you know pearl buttons and you know um un- unpicked the the side hem and reinforced it a different way or cut off the sleeve like you didn't do nothing to it like at least with the fear of god stuff he took those shirts those vintage band t-shirts and actually reworked them so they fit the way he likes the stuff to be fitting right so it's like drooping a little on the shoulder the neck's a little bit tight it kind of cuts off on the sleeves so you can see his tattoos fair but that rugby fans he did nothing so that Christmas, I think, is, is warranted. I think the other bits are a little bit out of order, right? And also, there's a little bit of it, little part of me that's a little bit like, if Virgil wasn't black, right, would he really be getting as much stick as he's getting out at the moment? Because I think it's a little bit OTT, especially when you've got people like, I don't know, who's the guy for St. Laurent now at the moment who, who essentially just sits there and, and copy and paste whatever he, Heidi's done previously in his, in his career. And he seems to get no hate whatsoever, right? Uh, I don't know. It's, it doesn't make sense sometimes. It's a bit. It's a little bit OTT. But that being said, he does take any stride. He doesn't really reply. He kind of keeps his keep, keeps his counsel and keeps it moving, which I'm a big admirer of, especially in the in the world that he lives in, because he's always glued to his phone, so he sees everything. He reads every DM. I'm assuming he reads every comment, so he's always on there trying to get get obviously inspiration and get kind of you know motivation to do the work that he's doing. He's also seeing the negativity. So the fact that he can just continue working is a real credit to him. But this is the first article I've seen him kind of respond to or reply to in public. He obviously retweeted his own Instagram or Twitter feed, sorry, specifically. And not Instagram. I think Twitter mostly because I think that's where he's got the least amount of followers or, you know, there's not much engagement there with people as opposed to Instagram and stuff. And then in the next tweet, he says the following, uh, obviously uh, doing a, a quote to of Vanessa Freeman's tweet about the story. And Virgil says, I'm going to do an academic lecture about this article one day, just figuring out which one. Riffing online is far too low hanging fruit for such an easy and massive case in point. Which, if it, if ever there was a way to like not respond to something like this, would be that way, innit? Because it does make Virgil sound like a bit of a cock. You know, that kind of like big. Uh, Sammy Ross has a tendency to do this too. Um, and I guess it's maybe just the way he speaks. But there is a tendency, and I don't know if it's like a thing that if it's like a consequence of not feeling like you belong in fashion because fashion is the worst right in terms of trying to get in when you're not somebody that looks like the conventional fashion person when you come from the places that i come from the places that they come from right and you see what we've seen and how we carry ourselves as men it can be difficult to navigate that kind of system 
and also keep counsel and also not act out of pocket, right? I've seen people do some stuff in fashion to people from ends where you'll be like, rah, man, if that ever happened anywhere outside these walls, this person would have got laid out. Do you know what I mean? It's not something that you would do. But obviously in fashion, people take advantage of it because, you know, it's a very coveted industry. The jobs are very hard to come by. It's a, basically, if you get one job in there once, you're, you're basically set up for life. No one's ever going to fire you. So I, I get it. And it's a dream come true for a lot of people. But I also think sometimes when they come into the scene they try too hard remember Kanye had that period when he was doing the APC stuff with uh with John Tatuio have you pronounced his name and you know Ellen he had that like weird white voice that he had I think there's there is there does come a point in time when they do try and assimilate too much and I guess this is a point in point in case a case in point with this whole like you know him doing art gallery stuff and uh having these soliloquies about the stuff that he's doing on Instagram the caption just be a caption but he turns it into some kind of you know paragraph about his work and his practice and shit I think it's all kind of it's, it's less so for us and it's more so a way for him to legitimize himself in front of the white audience again that's my opinion I think so and I think Sammy Ross has a tendency to do that too right when he kind of like speaks I don't know in, I, I, I don't know what the language it is sometimes that like he's talking about stuff and it's you know you're just looking at an M65 you're like okay cool I guess right so Maybe that's where he he's going wrong in this. But again, maybe he's just got his back up. He's read the altar coins. He's like, what the fuck? So he just kind of responded in the gist. But this isn't a, a great response. It's like, he's going to respond. I'm going to I'm going to do an academic lecture. As if like what? Like just writing it. It's, it's, as if like what Vanessa Freeman wrote was low brow. Because it was just an article she wrote in the New York Times. That's something that she had to like, you know, run through editors, proofread, make sure look. Like, do you know what I mean? It's just a, it's a very uh, belittling and thing to say, I think, in my opinion. Figuring out which one, riffing on each it's far too low hanging fruit to it. it's like the guy's a the guy can be a bit of a cock let's say that we it, i think that's fair to say i think even his friends would admit he can be a bit of a cock which is you know a fair point out i guess everyone that does a does i think everyone that operates at that kind of genius level which i would ascribe to him even though i'm not a fan of his work i would say the fact that he's able to affect culture and shift things and move the needle and stuff in, that, in the way that he's done it uh can he can be attributed to be a genius you're always going to have a bit of a cunty attitude anyway it's just I, I i don't know are there many geniuses that exist especially in the creative industries who aren't cocks who don't have a bit of a you know if you're not their friend you won't like them kind of vibe because I, I get that from virgil all these friends tend to like him and you know they're always there to like you know jack him up on stage when they want to but everyone else that doesn't know him has always got weird stuff to say about him which is Something that's general in all creative people that are like, you know, I could say that about a lot of designers that I know in London who are the same. Everyone around them it loves them. Everyone outside that circle is like, oh, that guy's a dickhead. Which, you know, is what it is. And then, of course, um, he had posted another, you know, just a picture kind of insinuating on what the opening sign would be about him kind of tearing down the industry. I don't know what it was. But anyway, so that was a tweet in, in theory, right? And this is the article itself. Let's read it through and we can kind of pick apart some stuff that well, I think is true and some stuff that is maybe a little bit harsh. So it opens. While Virgil Abloh, founder of Off-White and the, uh, and the menswear designer for Louis Vuitton is kind, of a, is kind of fashion figure that seems to demand comparison, right? Almost every profile contains one buried somewhere in the text or not so buried. He is Andy Moore of our time, says the Guardian. He is Jeff Koons, editor Stefan uh, Tunchi. Uh, he is often, and where no individual will do, a Renaissance man. While struggling uh, to explain his uh, ubiquity, his seeming sudden bank blanketing of culture, people grasp for someone, anyone, to make sense of its influence. Uh, after all, aside from his two fashion day jobs, here is a partial list of the companies and brands with which he has collaborated. Evian, Nike, Vitra, Ikea, Champion, Equinox, Jimmy Choo, uh, Sunglass Hut, and McDonald's. He has a list of galleries and museums where his work has been shown and sold. The Museum of Contemporary Art Chicago, Gallery Creo in Paris, Gagosian, the Louvre. He has a de he is where he DJs, Circa Loco in Ibiza, Jimmy's in Monte Carlo, Coachella, the Sun Club in Glasgow, and a Potato Head in Beach Club in Bali. You know what's interesting? He doesn't have there. That's something he did boast about. Bergheim. He played Bergheim was Zivi. I don't know why he's not boasting about that one. Maybe it didn't go down too well. Maybe Bergheim don't like when people promote this stuff, but he didn't write Bergheim there. But that's a pretty impressive list of collaborators and of venues he played as a DJ. Like, just if you just did that in a year, you'd be you'd be happy to retire. The fact that he's still going and has a day job is just insane. Like again, much like uh, I watched an interview with Logan Paul the other day on Low Jumper. Much like Logan Paul, 
you can't you might not like what they do you have to respect the hustle you have to respect the hustle they work fucking hard like kevin hart is the same in it kevin hart is the same way that he works so hard they just have to respect his hustle there's no way you can like look at kevin hart say he's corny he's cheesy yes you don't like his movies he, he's not funny on stand up but when it comes to working hard and putting his best foot forward and squeezing every single minute in iota he can out of a day those guys are no there's not parallel and i guess also you know what this also shows actually as much as people like to rag upon virgil and make make it seem like he's a bad guy it also shows just how lazy everyone else is in the industry if this guy could come in right off the back of being kanye west's creative director kanye's uh, quote-unquote assistant uh the guy behind the scenes is doing everyone's designs if he can come up this quickly it also shows just how lazy everyone else is because he you know yes he had some advantages but for the most part it's all just pure sweat and blood that he's got to the position that he's got to because if you looked at the people especially his contemporaries or his people his peer group i would argue he might be the least talented right out of his peer group he might be i would say as a as a he doesn't call himself a designer but as a designer with a capital d probably the least talented but can you name anyone else in that group that works harder than this guy for fuck's sake, he had to go. To, he, he was hospitalized for supposedly, right? Because of how hard he was working. We don't know, you know, it could be other things, who knows? But from what we know so far, he was hosp- hospitalized because for, for this shit. You know, people say, like, you know, they're really about this life. Like, he's really about this life. Like, he gives a shit about clothes. That much, he goes hospital for it. So, he has lectured at Rhode Island School of Design and Graduate School in Harvard and Columbia. But all the comparisons that have been posted uh, or posted, sorry, since Ablo landed in Paris Fashion Week six years ago began his viral takeover. Perhaps the one that gets the strongest reaction is a more fashion centric idea. Virgil Abloh is a Karl Lagerfeld on the millennial generation. I've been saying that for a while, said uh, Michael Burt, the chief executive of Louis Vuitton. Of course you've been saying that for a while. You fucking hired him. Who hired Mr. Abloh in 2018. Previously the chief executive of Fendi, working with Mr. Karl Lagerfeld from 2013 to 2012. So you can count his opinion to one side. But to pretty much everyone else in fashion, it's a blasphemous statement. Almost every time I suggested it to somebody while cat, uh, ch- uh, chatting catwalk side during the f- most recent fashion season, which, uh, since, uh, which since early February has been moving from New York to London to Milan and Paris, they blanched and said, oh, please, no. Oh, that's crazy. Is this a joke? As if, you know why, you know why fashion people are all full of fucking shit? Yeah, RIP Carl Lagerfeld, RIP the great, RIP the legend, right? God rest the dead, right? But, Let's not pretend like when Carl Lagerfeld was around, fashion people weren't uh, scoffing at the stuff that he was doing at Chanel and saying that it was tired, it was boring and lacking inspiration and he was polluting the world with his fucking stupid set designs and his controversial uh, poking at the bear at, you know, environmental issues and feminism and shit. Let's not pretend like he was some kind of loved figure towards the end. People hated Carl Lagerfeld. They couldn't wait for him to like, quote unquote, hand it over. You never would. Yeah, because you read the story about him. Is it his mum? Or he's on the dancer who, who would he basically says that someone kept asking about him retiring. He said, I think his dancer, mom, or aunt, somebody in his life who's a choreographer essentially died. Would rather, no, I think they that she they told him he would they would die, at, they'd rather die at their studio or they died at their studio. So he carries that as part of his kind of framework when it comes to work and fashion. So he was never going to retire anyway, right? He would have had to die and he died basically uh, for this shit and someone else took over. But let's not pretend as if Carl Lagerfeld is some like. You know, he did no wrong. He did plenty of wrong. I don't know. You could, the, the, the last five seasons, or uh, maybe even so, Chanel were like a blur. They're all the same. What do you remember about them? The sets? The the person that ran on randomly? What do you actually remember about the clothes that was that was changing, that, that changed things, that moved the needle? Come on, man. Let's get out of, get out of here. Um, then they said, don't quote me, uh, and made anodyne statements about Mr. Abel's relations with young people. Anyway, perhaps it's too early. For both men, Mr. Lagerfeld died uh, only a year ago. This fashion month at uh, 85-ish. Uh, after more than five decades in fashion, that's a fucking long time, man. The industry is still mourning his loss. Mr. Abloh, 39, has been showing a brand for only six years, which is fucking insane. Let's l- imagine from being like the inception of off-white to where he is now. Like It's just, again, you might not respect what he does. You might not respect the man, but you've got to respect the fucking work, man. The work effort is insane, especially in the creative industry where most people are lazy and don't do shit. Because everyone talks a big game everyone's like oh i'm doing this project and going to again you're not doing anything you're not doing it you're just talking because i was that person too i know what it's like when you are got all these cool ideas in you but you've got the what's that word called you've got your suffer from paralysis by analysis and you also not execute you don't ship things you just talk about stuff it's like the person that's always got that cool startup idea that's never launched it launch the damn thing put it out there just 
ask people for help. Don't make people sign NDAs. No one cares about your shitty idea. Just put it out there. Put your own money behind it. Don't wait for investment. Save up your wage working at that shitty job that you don't like anyway. And and then make a business for yourself so you can escape. Yeah, you know I mean? people don't do that. So the fact that you did that in six years is just insane. That's really, really, really commendable. Uh so Mr. Lagerfeld, uh, design, the designer of Chanel Fendi and his own line, among many other things, is often viewed as the ultimate fashion figure, a one of creative genius whose imagination and intellect uh, could not be contained in a single brand, whose understanding of the art and an atelier was unparalleled. He was above all a professional designer. That's the one thing that's, I think, fucking up Virgil in the fashion space. I think the fact that he can't actually make clothes like objectively, I think if you look at some of the stuff on the runway, like it just looks fucked up. I'm not too sure if it's because he likes it looking that way or because it just looks fucked. But it, it, it always, you know, what it reminds me of it, all these clothes that come down the runway remind me of Kanye West's first collection for Yeezy that time in Paris. It just it, there were some cool ideas there, but it just it didn't look good, right, to the eye because obviously he didn't have a team, the production, the manufacturing. Whereas Virgil doesn't really have that excuse with the new guards group, right? He could go, you know, he's there's essentially like, you know, he essentially uh, has everything in house, but it just doesn't look good as like an idea. If, if he's the one that's steering the ship and he's the one that's sketching out the ideas, the ideas just don't look interesting. They don't look cool. They don't look, not cool. They don't look, they don't look fashiony. They don't look like they've been designed well. So that's the thing, that's the thing that really fucks him up in terms of comparison with Carl Lagerfeld because it's like you can't, you can call Lagerfeld anything you want, but not a good designer is impossible. Uh, so, Ms. Abloh is a man who told the world at Columbia, you don't have to be a designer to be a designer. He doesn't even call himself a designer. He calls himself a maker, according to a New, York, New Yorker. Perhaps in acknowledgement of critics, myself included, who don't think he's particularly great at his day job or that he even cares, which is interesting, right? Because there is a part of me that thinks part of Virgil's role as a creative or as a fashion figure in the industry isn't necessarily isn't necessarily to be isn't ne isn't to be like a uh, john galliano or to be like you know alexander mcqueen god bless the dead i think his role is like more is bigger than that it's like we don't we won't see the impact of virgil abloh until maybe i don't know until he's long gone right because i think having my little my own story of being into fashion right i got into fashion firstly primarily from reading the style magazine uh, little handout, mag the little kind of magazine that ca that you get in the Sunday Times. That was the first thing that got me into fashion, and obviously reading uh British Vogue, and then from reading those magazines and finding out about Matthew Williamson and shit. Uh, I then got into fashion, got into researching models and designers and shit, and then so far, and then it obviously led me to go to Saint Martin to study product design. Right, I wanted to do fashion at first, but I thought you know what, let me just go into Saint Martin, just feel the vibe and absorb it that way. But that was that's what got me interested in fashion and when i got into it i was acutely aware that there weren't many people that looked like me right of course when i bumped into oswald, oswald boateng one time in soho i kind of freaked out like, oh my god shit it's you right I had a little quick chat with him it was fucking so super super cool and you obviously got to see that there was a real lack of representation in that way for that kind of voice in fashion especially when you consider you know there's not many i think we could all say like without making it sound you know disgusting but you won't really meet many black boys or people in general who aren't who haven't got a, like a slight interest in like dressing well or clothes in general so for there to be no real designer out there who's really pushing things forward in fashion uh whether they be male or female whether they be black or white or maybe mostly whether they be black is a real real shame um and obviously most of, most of it isn't to do with the industry it might be a cultural thing where you know our families don't really respect that kind of line of work they don't think it's an honorable job they want to go to medicine go you know into whatever into science whatever it may be but i think the fact that virgil has got this job is going to do more for the kids or for the industry you know in 10 20 30 years than it's going to do it for it now i think now maybe it's a welcome relief it's a welcome shake up i think a lot of the kids in fashion school need to kind of see that although they don't rate virgil as a designer and thinking what he does is shit they also need to see that hey look how much look at the opportunity he's gotten because he's the only one willing to work around the clock and get things turned in quickly he's the only one that's willing able he's really able to kind of join the what do you call it the underground and the overground kind of thing right do high and low right he's not snotty about collaboration he's not like um what do you call it he's not cynical he's an optimistic dude he seems like a positive guy um he gets on with stuff you know, he's unproblematic for the most part uh all these things are things that a lot of kids in schools and uni need to kind of see and also the fact that he kind of you know has his own little brand right 
He didn't go out and try and first of all become the assistant to Phoebe Philo and shit or work under St. Laurent or all these things, right? These jobs and he's getting locked into a company. He went out there and put his money where his mouth is. I'm a good designer. Boom. And did his own thing. And I don't think a lot of people, not, not enough people in the in fashion schools do that, I think, in my opinion. So I think maybe that's a good, he's a good, um, he's a good reaction to that so that they can be like, oh man, you guys, shit, I can do better now. Okay, do better then. You know what I mean? That, that's, I think, his role in it. Um, and of course, I think maybe like the technical skills might hinder him somewhat, but I think that impact is probably far greater than all that other shit, in my opinion. Um, he embraces and propagates the idea that fashion, this article continues, is not about clothes, but rather the totals of community and that the uniforms of the various youth and subcultures have a legitimate place in the temple of elite now that could him just be that could just, just that could just be him moving the goalposts because obviously he's not good at one thing so he's going to make sure that you know the other thing he's good at which is fair you know i don't blame him for that there's a suspicion somehow that he is scamming the industry and seeing how far he can exploit his own embarrassing desire his own embarrassing desire for school it's need for visible diversity and it's lust for millions of instagram followers which is true he probably is um exploiting it so far but i think everyone's exploiting it i think everyone needs to find an exploitation point that they can hone into so that they can make money and then they can make money so they can further on their ideas and continue creating. I think that's the only way you have to do it nowadays. And I also think, like, for the Katie gets for posting online, but who else is willing to do that shit? Like, who else would do that to that level to push? Like, would we see any fashion content online if Virgil wasn't around? If that kind of, in, like, do you remember when street style bloggers were still getting shit for posting their outfits on, online? That used to be, like, a thing that people looked down upon. Now people can't wait for Phil O to like get in front of them so he can take a picture of them from the ground up as they smile walking down wearing their, you know, their colour something they just, you know, like they ran into their wardrobe and ran out outfit. It's like get over yourselves. Anyway, so let's continue here. Uh, one more high fashion after all is famously white, set in its often old fashioned ways and yet desperate to appeal to a generation of consumers whom it is suspects have a very different idea of what matters than the current establishment does. Mr. Ablo exploits tantalizingly the promise of all that. People line up for what he's selling, even if it feels like what he's selling is a line, maybe because he is selling a line, which is true, very meta. I like that. Um, maybe it's true because I think that's probably the saddest part about the Virgil thing. I think for all the good he's done. I think a lot of his friends around these, like, especially people that kind of, you know, that's that, that, you know, go out of their way to kind of, you know, get on both knees and suck him off. They never, they never wear his clothes. They're not promoting the stuff that he does. They're not like, again, he's the big, don't get me wrong, he's the big dog. He's got the million followers and shit, but it doesn't, it seems as if like everyone just enjoys his freebies, right? Everyone, everyone wants to get flown out to like an activation or to hang out at a store or go to his show or go to an after party and get a free t-shirt but no one's actually willing to like say on record like his designs are doing this for the industry this the, no one's willing to say that because objectively they all know it's not the truth in it like if they compare what they buy in japan or what they buy from the small boutique in paris to what he does they know it it fails in comparison to it but you know, again, should his friends be his cheerleaders anyway for his design, or should they just be cheerleaders for him as a person, like I am? Because I like it as a what he represents. Don't get me wrong, uh, he's cool. Uh, maybe that's what his friends are doing, but I, I think that's where that that's that's the kind of thing that I kind of get a bit bummed out about. If I was him, like ugh, man, do you know what I mean? Like, but again, he probably doesn't care because you know all his friends happen to be like the coolest people in the industry, so it all it, it all comes back around. You know, it's all kind of full circle. Everyone kind of benefits from it. Everyone's explaining, these. everyone's explaining everybody, but everyone benefits from it. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, this moment of reckoning with the world we have fraught, uh, we have wrought is, in, is wrought in politics, sorry, in technology, in society. And in many ways, the idea that it may be Mr. Abloh who has inherited a malographer mantle that in, pro, in profile and ambition and reach occupies the same sort of mind and cultural space as the Gen Y and Z consumers and the social media age that can't occupy for those who came before is simply a pointed reflection of the choices the industry has made and when it comes to its own value system in place in its consumer mindset, which is true. Maybe the fact that, you know, they spit out and chew the most talented designers to the point that, you know, they commit suicide. And then, you know, what you're left with is what we've got now in the industry. You've got these like weird hybrids, isn't it? Everyone's like a creative director, art director, you know, product person. They're not very much, they're not like the quintessential fashion designer. Back in the day, you'd have a fashion designer who was surrounded by a team of business, marketing, advertising people who were then able to present the work out into the public. Now you have these, you know, everyone has to be multi hyphenate slash slash slash, which no, no, not everyone can do to a high level, by the way. Uh, and then designers who can actually just design and really cut a suit amazingly well, right? Who can fucking, you know, do the fuck out of a hem, right? Who can really make the lining of a suit look as impressive as the outside, right? 
who know the proportion between the leg and all this shit. Like the p- designer designers, right? Those people, they're dying by the millions, isn't it? By the, or by the thousands, right? They're not the most sexiest thing out there anymore because they don't know how to hashtag. They don't know what a cool market activation is. They don't have any cool friends, right? That's kind of going by the way. So again, it's fashion's fault in, in theory as well. In pure biography, uh, continues. In pure biography, the two are, duh, very different. Mr. Lagerfeld was white and German, grew up in a hot house of high culture and elitism in the first half century. And also, maybe it was a reported uh, Nazi. We don't know if that's true. But I'm going to throw that in there. A legend. Escaped to Paris as a teenager and apprenticed among the most historic French houses in Barmain and Patou uh, before beginning his career at Chloe. Mr. Ablo, a black American, grew up in a suburb outside of Chicago a child of Ghanaian immigrants studied engineering in college and then architecture at Lloyd's Institute of College worked with Kanye West for a decade and opened off-white in 2013 his former introduction of apprentice apprenticeship sorry consists of six months at Fendi right so it's co- complete contrast but again it might be representative of the era right uh, one was born in what the 40s one was born in the 80s I don't know do you know what I mean maybe it's a different era but it does it, it's quite interesting to see that you know he's got like six months at Fendi you know designing leather sweatpants and uh, Karl Lagerfeld was you know interning at Balmain uh, anyway one comes from the one comes from the couture tradition. One built his career on the streetwear. One saw himself as a caretaker of artistic heritage under Mr. Lagerfeld Chanel, acquired a speciality of tillers and embroiders and hat makers and cashmere spinners all to pr- protect them. One has keen awareness of himself as a harbinger of cultural change and a breaker of boundaries. Mr. Abloh is one of the rare black creators and directors of uh, that great talents of France or a French heritage house, which makes his position practically fright uh what fretted and unusual and yet in many ways he may he may uh they may have met in the middle which is kind of where fashion is in these days mr uh, mr burke said ablo is digital like carl cross-generational like carl hard-working like carl intelligent like carl like carl like carl mr burke fucking loves virgil isn't it? no wonder uh Mr. Lagerfeld is probably putting a lot of zeros in that guy's bonus in the year. Mr. Lagerfeld, who dabbled in photography, a book publishing, and collaborated in the brands that include the H&M and Coke. Mr. Abelow's seemingly voracious desire to put his creative mark on everything and anything, even if the end result seems splash dash. He possesses a belief that his own talent, even if it is diverted to a project for only about five minutes. He has a heft, healthy disrespect for the pretentiousness and conventional wisdom of fashion, which is true, which is probably something that comes from a lot of pain in it if you've been interning at Fendi and you felt as if like you guys weren't getting respected or you felt as if the fashion industry was you know telling you that you weren't good enough when you do get in you're not going to then just suddenly you know uh bow down and start you know curtailing and obeying what they're saying you're gonna you're gonna kick up some fuss remember you're gonna kick some shit down in it and be a bit of a nuisance anyway uh like Lagerfeld Mr. Ablo has made his mark in part by embracing irony like Lagerfeld he has made a community uh that can seem like a cult of personality around himself like Mr. Lagerfeld he speaks in rolling sentences and it's pleasure to listen to especially in a world where the most celebrity name celebrity name sorry often seem try instead of to seem to be tying themselves in knots as a process of answering a question right uh we look at you highly surveyed uh mr lagerfeld blithely sprinkled these conversations with erudite references as does mr ablo though this uh, his tend to be references of popular intellectuals uh miles van der Rohe, duchamp rem Koolhaas. you know those names already it's funny they had the same way of doing the name drop in it like kanye does that too in it these rolling names so that they they form like it's like you know Marvin and their own do 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 It's like a it's like a little it's like a mantra. While Lagerfelds were often obscure and extraordinary. The daily illustrator Carl Nielsen in his nineteen fourteen children's book East Sun of the West of the Moon. In the realm of the self branding, Mr. Lagerfeld has a signature look, a uh, powdered white ponytail, high collar. Mr. Ablo has a signature logo, the question mark. Mr. Ablo legitimizes his criticize. Oh no, Ablo has that legitimate look. He has that thing in it. He has that walk that's like arms down. He walks like Ian Connor. They all have that walk, that walk where like you just let you let you just let your body walk you forward. It's very bizarre. Don't they walk the same? Do you think so? Ian Connor and Virgil have the same like weird like walk. <laughs> Miss Abloh was criticized for doing too much, a lot of it not well enough. As is Ablo, so far Miss Abloh has proved himself best as a designer when building a top of foundation and establishing someone else. His baton is more interested in his off-white, which is very true. Off-white is painful at the moment, man. It's really, really bad. Which often seems like a pallid copy of other people's ideas. Just as Mr. Lagerford Chanel was more effective than his namesake label, which is yeah, the Carl Lagerford brand was horrendous. Uh, when led to create from scratch, the result of both parts was and has been less convincing. Miss Abloh has been called out for copying, blah, 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 we know that. Uh, this is a logger for creativity is extraordinary uh let's go to the bottom i don't want to read the whole thing but anyway so the whole thing is there check it out but then the, the the sad thing about it was that when when that article came out we saw his fashion show right 
And <sighs> Jesus Christ, man. I don't know, man. Obje- again, objectively speaking, I don't know what I don't know what you guys think, but objectively speaking, just like a, someone that likes clothes, right? It just looks really awful. And I, I think for a long time, I thought to myself, you know what? Is Virgil doing off white like um, undercover? John Takashi undercover? Like every collect, there's no like, la- there's no for, for anyway from the outside looking in from the un- from the uninformed as my as I am. J- what John Takashi does undercover, there doesn't seem to be like a a through line from collection to collection it just seems that one collection is about some, telling one story then it moves on to a completely different thing there's nothing that ties it together you know like a you know like a Rick or like a Saint Laurent or like a Celine from back in the day where like you know there was, there was some kind of theme that tied it together right in evolution it just seems as if like every season he just has a new idea and just blurts it out and tries to extend it across like you know 40 plus looks and yeah look number one like the artwork to come in just like you know, you got one of the hottest models in the world wearing your outfit. It just looks like it looks horrendous. Like you just cover the all up in these ruffles and nothing. F- it, it, you know, it looks like the stuff that he designs. What's that thing? Uh, Project Runway stuff. Like, all right, it's designed, but phew, wow, man. Like, none of that stuff fits well. None of it. Nothing fits well. Look at it. But again, the only good thing, the, the, the good thing I'd say about Virgil is that the girls here generally look like they're having fun. Like, he creates a good show. It's fun. It's cool. Those models that usually have to go to, like, you know, really drab and dreary uh, dress rehearsals or fittings and have to be touched up and uh, objectified and insulted by these really uppity, up their own ass fashion designers. Then you got someone like Virtue who's, like, dapping you up, hugging you, talking to you about some thing you saw in the shade room, playing the coolest hip-hop music, smoking weed. You know what I mean? I think it's that that's the cool thing about it. I think it's changed what is expected of a fashion designer. But just as when it comes to just plain old clothes, I think that Vanessa Friedman, like again, where this looks like something he just jacked off like Jonathan Sanders or you know Luebe or something, right? Or like like where does that link? Where does that where does look number five with this overcoat? And this amazing bag and a liver trousers and a saddles and that little necklace. Where does that link to like one with the opening look? Where, where's the link to that? There's nothing that like you wouldn't even think that's you know it looks like it looks like a those student shows where every, like every fourth look like it's like four looks is per person. It's just yeah, it's just bizarre, man. It's honestly bizarre. And I, and I think this is his cheat code when he doesn't know what to do. He has these like long these knit where these knit tops with like long sleeves and he just puts a pattern on it, which is you know this is a cool cheat code, but you can see it from a mind love. But yeah. The stuff he does clothes wise is just I don't know, man. Again, the best stuff he's done so far has been with Louis Vuitton, obviously, and obviously with Nike. When he's already got something to build upon, like you know, his collaborations shoes wise, you can't deny everything's been a win. Even these Jordan fives that are coming out, suddenly he's made people want Jordan fives again. Like it's fucking insane, right? So the guy's a fucking talent and a fucking freak in that way. But everything else, it's hard, man. It's tough. Like this, that none, none of this makes sense. Like it's just like suddenly you got this amazing dress there. Suddenly out of nowhere, out of all the crap you got this, but then is it the model making it look amazing or it's just I don't know. But yeah, interesting article none, nonetheless. Definitely recommend you check it out. Uh, is Virgil Abloh the millennial version uh, of what is it? What was it, what's the actual title of it say? Is Virgil Abloh the car lover for millennials? Check it out on New York Times available.